This video is supported by Private Internet Access. With unlimited data for just $2.91 per month, they've got your VPN needs absolutely covered. Check it out at the link below. Hey, what's up guys, CP Monty here, back with another motherboard overview, and today we're here with the Gigabyte B450i Aurorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. So other than the really long name, the other day I was trawling through my Amazon affiliate numbers to see what was kind of popular, what you guys were buying, and what you guys sort of were interested in, and the B450 Pro i Wi-Fi Gigabyte Aurorus motherboard kept coming up time and time again. In fact, it sold 20 times in just the last three months. Just some reference, other than some thermal paste, nothing else that I link in as Amazon affiliates sells that much. So this guy must be really, really popular. So I thought to myself, damn, let's go ahead and have a look and see what the fuss is all about. And today, we're here with exactly that. So kicking off the video in the design department as we normally do, we are looking at a small ITX board based on the AM4 socket with, of course, the B450 chipset, meaning this guy is ready to go with the latest generation of 2000 chips from AMD, but also to support the previous generation and, most importantly, overclocking. It has two RAM slots with a very beefy looking VRM for such a small board. And unfortunately, I was only not able to overclock anything and and overclocking was kind of out of the equation for me as unfortunately I didn't own the CPU going into this guy so I didn't want to blow it up and then have to buy a dead CPU so unfortunately today there was no overclocking but all in all though the thermals that we did measure weren't too bad anyway one of the large features of this board is definitely that chipset M.2 kind of heatsink guy down at the bottom there this guy's pretty large and is also too pretty beefy but thankfully doesn't have any gross colored accents on this guy or any RGB for my build today I did throw a 970 Evo under this guy so it was definitely kept nice and cool and uh, in reality though whether or not these things make the world's biggest difference uh, the jury's still out on this one but all in all it still definitely was a nice little addition now spec wise this motherboard has built-in Wi-Fi which is a big plus especially for smaller lighter systems that don't have a whole bunch of PCI Express slots it is featuring the gigabit GBE LAN from Intel which is powering both the Wi-Fi and also to the LAN connections with their C for speed kind of internet packet accelerator which uh, in the real world, uh, it's not exactly the world's biggest difference, but hey, it's still nice to have anyway. Audio is handled by the Realtek ALC 1220VB audio codec, and on the board actually has the world's best marketing diagram. When it comes to marketing audio, let's face it, it's not exactly the world's most interesting thing. You have the codec and then you have some bits and pieces and for most of us we don't really care that much and motherboard manufacturers usually put some ridiculous claims on their things and some ridiculous stuff here but Gigabyte kept it honest today with some high-end audio capacities. Mmm high-end. Usually they say something ridiculous like military grade, extra explosion proof or some sulfur fury acid proof thing but nope just high quality today. Anyway, moving on, the rest of the board does support dual USB 3.1 Type A ports, but no Type C. Uh, unfortunately, there's also to no Type C header inside of it as well. Uh, we're also to finding our big PCI Express 16X slot that runs 16X electrical and obviously physical, which is backed up by a metal reinforcement. Finally, we also do get two fan headers, an RGB LED header for the CPU, and also do RGB header for the RGB strips that you can hook up to this guy for the RGB. RGB enabled Ryzen coolers, but this guy doesn't have a bunch of RGB splattered all over it, which I think looks not too bad. And this really helps tie the system, or rather the board, together. It has decent specs, but also do has good neutral colours that won't stand out like a sore thumb. So no matter what colour scheme you're planning to do with this build, it's going to fit in not too badly at all. But what was this guy actually like to build with? You can look at specs all day, you can look at B-roll all day, but what was it like to actually build with? And I have to say, it wasn't too bad at all. The pre-installed cooler mounts were definitely very nice on the AMD uh, CPU side. This is something I've loved about AMD CPU sockets for a long time is they've got pre-mounted um, mounting hardware for your cooler. You don't have to worry about screws and trying to hold the back plate into the motherboard and try and screw them down on both sides. It's just so 
much easier. I wish Intel adopted this not only on their 2011 socket, but also too on their 1150X socket. It just makes life so much easier. Uh, the M.2 cooler was definitely nice to have, although I did manage to slice the back of my hand on it. I was like picking it up and then it like slipped out of my hand and then I went to grab it with a little flick and then the flick just scratched it here. Anyway, I cut my hand on it. I don't think it's going to happen to anyone, but that's definitely something that I've accidentally done. Uh, the 24 pin and 8 pin EPS power are definitely in the decent enough locations and they're kind of be expected there. However, as this is a mini ITX board, things are a little bit more crammed. So, uh, for example, when you plug in the um, 8 pin uh, EPS power, I did find it's really important to plug it in first before you go slotting in the motherboard uh, because once it's in the actual motherboard tray, in the case, it has a tendency of being really, really tight. In fact, I couldn't actually plug in the 8 pin EPS power once I'd installed the motherboard because my hand was just too big and I wasn't even using a mini ITX case. I was using a standard uh, Cooler Master Master Box Maker Box Master 500, the normal ATX sized one. So uh, even in such a big case, I did find it hard to get my hand in there. So uh, I do recommend plugging in all the power and all the connections before you go ahead and actually put the motherboard in the system. VR heatsink was definitely nice to have again. I couldn't unfortunately test it out fully as I didn't have an overclockable CPU or rather I couldn't actually overclock the CPU uh, but all in all it does look beefy enough to keep the system nice and cool. Speaking of cooling, fans were a big problem. Unfortunately this guy only has two fan headers. One for a case fan and one for your CPU. I would have really liked to see at least three, maybe even four as even though a lot of mini ITX cases don't have a whole bunch of fan mounts, there's still a lot of people out there who might want to run a dual 120 mil rad and a uh, external or rather an exhaust uh, fan or an intake fan or something like that uh, unfortunately it only has two fan plugs again how much harder it would have been to throw in another one or two extra fan headers and saving me from using a splitter uh, would have been nice to see uh, but isn't exactly a deal breaker for a lot of people out there to be clear it still was definitely okay and got the job done just fine uh, but it would have been nice to see some extra fan headers here I did like how clearly everything was labeled however everything was just exactly clear uh, other than needing to look up the front IO headers as they're different on literally every motherboard out there. Um, I did really like how clear everything was laid out and also too marked out on the motherboard. All in all though was definitely a positive experience. And that then brings us to the conclusion of this quick little overview of the Gigabyte B450i Aurora's Pro Wi-Fi. It definitely does a good job in the visual side with a simple and clean aesthetic and no RGB vomit all over the place. It has decent enough specifications and decent enough connectivity for just about any other small form factor build out there and when it comes to actually building with the system the board was solid it had plenty of things in the correct places and all in all just kind of slotted into place as you'd expect with a mini ITX system I did throw a 970 Evo in underneath that M.2 cooler thing and it seemed to work just fine although it, it, it did get a little bit on the warmer side but wasn't exactly thermal throttling all over the place so I guess that's definitely okay right there and whilst I wasn't able to unfortunately overclock the CPU taking a look at this guy in terms of how beefy it is and taking a look at the rest of the internet it does seem to be not too bad here in terms of VRM temperatures. If I had to pick out some negative points with this particular motherboard the lack of a USB-C port is definitely something that does really hurt especially here in 2018 going into 2019 and only two fan headers were really not that great and also to not having right angle SATA and 24 pins were something that won't exactly hurt everybody's build out there as a lot of mini ITX cases has different sort of mounting locations and chances are you may not even be using SATA in a mini ITX build these days but all in all would have been nice to see right pin 24 pin and also to right angle SATA Unfortunately, we didn't get that right there. Um, and I guess if we're really nitpicking, it would have been nice to see the RGB header slightly closer to the edge of the motherboard as opposed to where it is. But all in all though, those are really nitpicky parts to this motherboard and is definitely a very solid board when it comes into what we actually get for the money that we do pay. But with that being said, guys, let me know down in that comment sections, what motherboard are you running in your system right now? Are you running those old school blue gigabyte motherboards or those old terrible brown ASUS motherboards, do let me know down in that comment sections. Guys, if you want to pick up this motherboard, you can check that description box. Thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.